Right, now we move on to the equations of motion. The equations of motion are equations we can use when you're told there's a constant acceleration. Now, the situations you might be told that in is, you might be told something about a car moving along with an acceleration of, and all you can do is assume that that acceleration is constant. It might say, um, so if you're given that, it might say that it's constant, or the other thing is if it's falling freely, and then the value of A is given by acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 metres per second squared on the Earth. So there are four equations that we use in physics. Um, I think one of those might be written slightly differently in maths, but I'm just going to show you the four equations we use in physics. So the first one, um, V is equal to U plus AT. And we'll just write what everything means. U is initial velocity. IL velocity. V is final velocity. A is acceleration, T is time, and there's another one which isn't in this equation, is S is equal to displacement or distance. I'll not bother writing the end of that. Right, so that's your first equation. Your second equation then, displacement equals a half U plus V times T. Your third equation is um, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And the fourth equation, number four, is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now, the one in maths I think that's sometimes written differently is this one. You can write it down as S equals VT minus a half AT squared if you're given a final velocity. So that is another alternative that you, you can use quite freely here. Now, the problem with these, using these equations isn't that they're so difficult, or even once you've got used to using them, which, choosing which one to use, the problem is deciding, is this when I use them? Because the question won't say, use the equations of motion to work out the distance travelled, the final velocity, the initial velocity. It will just give you values or it will give you a graph and say what is and you have to decide in that case is that what you use. So you always decide if you're given a constant value of A or you're given a value of A or if you're told the object is falling freely or being thrown up then A is equal to minus 10 and you can use them in that case. So we're going to show you a few examples of this. And we'll do a few answers. Again, feel free to stop the video, um, do your own answer, and then just check, did you get the right answer? So this question, we are given the deceleration produced by the brakes of a car on a particular occasion is 7 metres per second squared. So we already know, and we're going to write down what we know, we already know A is equal to, now it says it's deceleration, so we're going to write it in as minus 7. The car was initially moving at 14, so u is equal to 14. Deduce the braking distance of the car. So we're looking for a displacement. And the time taken for it to stop. Now we can't do all this in one go, so we'll do that bit in the next question. Um, for the car to stop, that means its final velocity um, is equal to zero. So we've got a, u, s and v. And if we look back at our equations to see which equation has got S, U, A and V in it? And you can see that it's the last one here, S, U, A and V. So we need to use our last equation there. So if I just use a green pen here, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. 0 is equal to 14 squared plus 2. Now it's times minus 7 times S. Um, so... 14 squared is 196. And then that's going to be minus, I'm going to multiply the 7 and the 2, minus 14s. And therefore, to get an answer, I'm going to bring the 14s across. It's minus at the minute, it will become plus when I bring it over. And that's equal to 196. So therefore, s is equal to 196 divided by 14. 
and the answer actually comes out as 14 metres. So it takes a car 14 metres to stop when it was initially moving at 14 metres per second. Another question, again, feel free to stop the video. I might scan in a wee bit, I see the writing, writing is quite small. So it tells you a parcel of weight 200 newtons is dropped from a stationary helicopter at a height of 1,000 metres. The parcel is attached to a parachute which opens at a height of 920 metres. Show that the parachute opens four seconds after the parcel is dropped from the helicopter. All right. Um, so the first thing what, that we have to do is work out here um, what, how far the parcel travels before the parachute opens. So the distance travelled is 1,000 minus 920. And so that's a distance of 80 metres. We know that its initial velocity, u, is equal to zero. We know that it's got an acceleration um, due to gravity, which is 10 metres per second squared. And the last thing that we are looking out for is time, and we're hoping that our answer will come out as four. So we need an equation which links s, u, a, and t. And if we look back at our e equations again, we need one linking s, u, a, and t. And you can see that's equation three, s, u, a, and t. So s equals u, t plus a half a, t squared. S is 80. U is 0, so U, 0 times T is 0, so I just write 0 in there. Plus a half, it's been accelerated at a rate of 10 metres per second squared, and we're looking for a value for T. So 80 is equal to 5 times T squared. And T squared then is equal to 80 over 5, which gives you 16. And therefore, the square root of 16 is equal to 4. And it's time, so it's in seconds. So that just proves. Now, the 200 newtons there had nothing to do there. It was in the question, and it was maybe just there to give you a red herring or something like that. So